Today's workout is a 20 minute C-section strength workout, intermediate level. Safe and effective movements for C-section moms to build strength and endurance postpartum. It's intermediate, so make sure you've done the beginner version of this workout. All you need is a mat and a set of dumbbells. Let's get started. Hey mamas, welcome to our intermediate C-section strength workout. We're gonna work full body with dumbbells and a small step or stairs. The step is optional and the dumbbells are optional for lower body if you wanna do body weight. Let's grab those heavier weights first. Again, you want something challenging, but maintainable through the 50 second interval. I've got 20 pounds and then 10 for my upper body. We're gonna start with a lateral step up. So you're gonna take one foot onto this box or this step, and we're gonna step on and off, leading with that same foot. So here we go, step on, push through that heel, and then slowly lower down, put that foot off. And you keep that foot on the bench or you can step it all the way off. I like to just keep it on. And then slowly lower, lightly tap down with that opposite foot. You really wanna focus on loading that glute, that side glute of the leg on the bench or on the step. So push out of your heel more than your toes. I want you to load that heel, keep the heel down as you lower that opposite leg. So all the way down, do you feel the difference there? That way you're really loading that glute and then softly tap down here. So you can see I'm not pushing out of my standing leg on the floor, I'm pushing out of the leg on the bench, on the foot, through the foot on the bench. Engaging my core at the top, squeezing that glute. Now, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So you can see why you want a heavy weight because it goes by quickly, we're moving slow and controlled. Now, same thing, other side, pushing through that foot and then slowly tap down. Again, keeping that heel glued to the bench. You might feel a little shakier, totally normal. I'm right there with you, so. So this is the next level from the last, see what I mean? From the last workout, the beginner variation, we did step ups one leg at a time. But now the lateral step up is gonna really get us into those side glutes and provides a little more instability, right? But think about how many times you do this move. How many times you get on and out of the car throughout the day? Probably a lot, right? This is what you need to be doing to help strengthen your body for everyday life, right? Couple more seconds here, let's get one more in. Nice, okay, we're gonna keep one foot on the bench and do an elevated front lunge. Switch your legs, put that opposite foot on top of the bench now. So we're leading with that fresh leg. You can keep your weights or not here. Stride is long, we lunge down and up. Find that position to where you feel comfortable. You're going 90 degrees at the knees and then that front thigh is going parallel or below. So my front leg starts about parallel to the floor because of the height of my bench. So I'm going below parallel, really pushing that back knee toward the floor, driving through my front heel, coming up. So I stay loaded in that front leg the entire time. There's no shifting back. There's no resting. That quad, that glute, it is loaded. It is burning the whole time. And that's kind of what you want. If you do need to shake it out, if you need a little bit extra break, no problem, you take it. It's your workout. And again, you don't have to use a step here. You can take the step out, you can take the weights out. Lots of options. Whew. Man, that is a quad glute burner. But so good to follow up with those step ups because we really do double duty for the glutes. Opposite foot forward, long stride, down and up. You might need to kind of play around with that stride a little bit, especially with that front foot elevated, it makes it a little more challenging, or a lot more challenging, really. Depending on the height of your step, I've got about a 12 inch step here. I wouldn't go much higher than that for this. It's gonna be really difficult, unless you got really long legs, which I do not. Stairs will work well too. But again, we want to focus on keeping that weight shifted forward, driving out of that front heel. That loads the glute. I can't stress enough how much we want to load those glutes because we all want a firm lifted butt, right? We all want a stronger core that's healed, right? We all want to function well, thrive in our everyday activities, right? All about those glutes. We got to have strong, functional, and mobile glutes. So we got to stretch too. So that last part's about, oh my goodness, that was tough. Okay. Heavy weights, or you can drop to lighter weights. Your choice, I'm gonna scoot my bench. We're gonna do a reciprocal row. So hinging from your hips, flat back, we're gonna row. Front arm, pull that elbow back. Back arm, pull the elbow back. 
So pulling the elbow back and up, squeezing the shoulder blades together. I'll show you from like a side angle. My back is flat, my chin is tucked. I'm trying my best not to shrug my shoulders. I'm trying to keep my body weight forward, loaded in the heels, but also loaded in that lower back safely. Glutes are engaged, core is engaged. Moving slow and controlled again. Cardio has its place, but we're not trying to go as fast as we can to get the heart rate up. Heart rate will go up as the muscles respond to the stimulus. And I'm feeling that, and I'm not even going that fast. It's all about that weight in your hand and the technique you're using. Last one. All right, we're gonna move on to a bicep curl. So wide bicep curl. Get those lighter weights, or you can stay heavy if you're up for it. Turn the palms up. We're gonna take the arms out wide and then back two straight arms at the bottom. So a little bit wider than a traditional bicep curl. You can really feel it on that eccentric phase right here as we lower. You can feel that difference in the forearms, right? And then as we come back up, making the lever length and the lever angle a little bit different really challenges the muscles in a new way. And that's what we're all about here. Just doing things just a little bit differently. Even just stepping up your game with your technique makes all the difference with those strength moves. And again, we wanna keep that spine in neutral, glutes relaxed, core is neutral. So we're not overly bracing or squeezing the abs. We want a natural, strong core brace. And if you need more tutorials on how to do that, check out my C-section recovery plan and my postpartum ab program for that. We're gonna move on to a reverse fly. So we're gonna hinge from the hips back flat, and we're gonna take those arms wide, open and close. So the elbows are soft and we're opening to about shoulder height here. A little bit of a diagonal profile here. You can see my neck is long, my back is straight, my hips are back, core is engaged. And in all these exercises, we've got a mild core contraction. Again, we're not overly bracing the core, we're just keeping that core pelvic floor contracted and again, I've also got a shorts video in my shorts on how to do that when you're doing an exercise. It is something somewhat of a learning curve to do that. Again, I'll show you more from the side here so you can see that side profile. Really great for posture, but if this is too intense to stay here the whole time, you can do one rep and then stand up in between. All right, we're gonna move on to a lying tricep extension. So we're gonna go on to our backs now. Carefully come down. You can keep your knees up, feet down. We're gonna take the weights over the shoulders and then bend the elbows, take those weights toward your temples and then extend the arms again. Keeping the elbows bent, pointed to the ceiling, wrists strong. And then at the top, we've got that full extension. So your arms should be parallel. The dumbbells should be parallel throughout the movement. Lower back should be pressing gently toward the floor. Again, we're not pushing down, but we are just gently bracing that core. Again, keeping those elbows pointed upward, shoulders away from the ears, slow and controlled here. A couple more, we got a few more seconds, maybe just one more, and I'll do it. Okay, we're gonna keep moving now to a marching glute bridge. You can keep a weight or you can go with body weight on this one. So we're gonna drive those hips up. Weight can be on the legs. We're gonna lift one leg at a time, put it down. Opposite leg, put it down. You can flex or point the foot, whatever's more natural here. But the goal is to keep that opposite leg pushing into the floor as you lift the other leg. So you're getting both glutes. And if you're holding a dumbbell on your lap, you're gonna feel your hip drop a little bit Try to minimize that as much as you can. So push through that heel on the ground, try to keep that hip up and stable. Minimize that shift, that rocking. So good. A little bit of instability is so good for the glutes and core, and we wanna create that safely here. We don't want the feet too far away from your butt, so check and just make sure they're not too far out. Rest. All right, we are gonna move to a push-up variation, a push-up back extension. So make sure you've got plenty of space around here. We're gonna start from the floor. So hands 
Thumbs in line with your armpits, tuck the toes. We're gonna brace that core, exhale, push off the ground. Staying on the knees, we're gonna lower all the way back down, reach the arms overhead, pull the elbows back down. Place the thumbs to the armpits. Let's do that again, breathe out, push up. Slowly lower down, all the way chest to the floor, arms overhead, just the upper body. Pull the elbows back, lift that chest. Hands down, push up. Again, multifaceted movement here. It's going to take some time to get this one down. Again, right here, just the upper body. Squeeze those glutes, keep the legs straight down on the floor. Now tuck the toes. And I'm staying on the knees for this variation, but you can also go up to the toes if you're ready for it. And rest, we've got 30 seconds now. Whew, that last one was really challenging for me. We're gonna keep moving now, we go back to the bench. We go back to those step ups, lateral step ups. So grab the bench, grab your weights. If it wasn't challenging the first time, maybe grab heavier weights or add the weights if you didn't do them the first time. We're gonna repeat everything again. So this is our time to really maximize what we've done that first round. We've started to hit fatigue, now we're gonna push through it. Let's go. So first side, again, that heel stays glued. You are pushing through this leg. It's like you don't even have another leg. It's all this glute doing the work. So when you drop this foot, barely touch it down. Don't push off it, just push off here. Squeeze that booty, exhale on the push. Keeping just a nice lifted posture. Feels good to work hard. Tell yourself that throughout this next set. It's gonna be a challenge. We've already hit fatigue, but now it's time to maximize on those strength gains, and that's what we do when we're fatigued and we continue to push. Same thing, other leg. We wanna feel those muscles working hard. We wanna feel like we are about to quit. Because when you're on the verge, that threshold of I think I'm gonna quit. That is exactly where you start to change. That is exactly what your body needs to do to get stronger. But of course, if you really are not feeling it, if you don't feel well, there's a difference between feeling challenged and feeling unwell or really just uncomfortable. Listen to your body. If you need to pull back, you pull back. Try it again another day. There's always grace. It's not a sprint. Postpartum recovery is like, Forget marathon, it's like an ultra marathon, which I don't even have the capacity to understand why people do that, but that is your recovery postpartum. It is an ultra marathon, it is hard. It takes a lot of grit, it takes a lot of time, but you're here, you're showing up. Consistency and grace, tell yourself that. All right, keep those heavy weights. We're gonna stay with the bench for that elevated front foot lunge. Go back to that fresh leg, lace it on top of that bench, long stride, let's do it. Stamp that front heel into the bench. Not feeling it, take the bench away, take the weights away. Stay with me. Can you wiggle your front toes? Can you put more of that pressure in your heel? There's always something you can do. If you're not feeling it, if you're not feeling challenged or if you're just needing something to focus on, is your core tight? Are you dropping that back knee low? All these little things make a big difference in the grand scheme of your fitness, right? Oh, I think this is my favorite and my least favorite because it's the hardest. Same thing, other leg. Long stride, let's go. Digging through that front heel. We're so close to being done with these lunges. But again, what I tell you, it feels good to work hard, right? We're gonna remember that, it feels good to work hard. Even when it feels like 20 seconds last forever, like our legs are about to fall off. When we think about our to-do list, 
put it on the back burner right now. You're here, you're in it. Focus on that feeling, you're almost there. Rest, all right. Reciprocal rows, you can stay with that heavy weight. You can go lighter if you'd like. Get the bench out of the way. Have we, we on a nice flat back. One arm at a time. You want a little extra challenge, try switching the weights partly through. So halfway, you're lowering that weight, you're already bringing the other one up. Do you see what I mean? And then you're really reaching through that front arm, reaching and pull, reaching and pull. Keeping that core tight, stable flat back. So good for the posture, the core, the glutes. A couple more seconds here. Nice, okay, bicep, wide bicep curls. Grab those lighter weights, or if you dare, stick with the heavier ones. Arms wide. Slow lower. Focusing on that squeeze. Forearms to biceps at the top. And then slow and controlled, lower back to the legs. You don't have to touch the legs, but I do want a full extension, so arms are not locked out, but straight at the bottom. That's the 10 seconds. I love when we get to upper body. Even though it's my least favorite to train, I get to catch my breath a little bit. It's hard to teach upper body sometimes or lower body sometimes because my heart rate gets so high. Okay, reverse flies. So we're gonna hinge from the hips, take those arms out wide, get those posterior rear delts. Back of the body here, keeping that chin tucked. I always say to people, if you need to look at me, look at me with your eyes, not your head. So keeping that neck long, chin tucked in so the spine's neutral. You wanna make it harder? Slowly come down. Second set's always so much harder. You've hit fatigue, but I love it because when you hit that fatigue, now is your chance to really persevere through it. That's when strength happens, right? It's not just when you hit fatigue that you get stronger. It's pushing past that wall. You gotta get there to really build strength. All right, coming to that tricep extension. So back to the floor, laying down. Watch out if your bench is behind you, push it away a little bit. Take those weights up, bending at the elbows. Take them toward your temples and then extend the arms. You can also put the weights together and take them to your forehead or the crown of the head rather. If you want to make it a little bit easier, separating the weights makes it a little bit more challenging. Keeping those elbows in nice and tight. Just one, about one more and we'll be golden here. Rest, all right. Moving on to that marching glute bridge. I like my heavy weight for this one, but again, use a weight or not. We're gonna drive up through those hips, squeeze the booty, one leg up. Again, minimizing that rocking. And usually what that entails is you slow down. You really focus on driving out of that heel, but creating that stable base of support Again, keeping that pelvic floor, that core really engaged here.
finally feel like I've caught my breath here, but man, doesn't mean we're coasting. Those glutes are still really working here. And if you forgot, we've got those push up back extensions next. So go ahead and drop that weight. We're gonna come over onto our bellies, starting from the floor. I'm gonna go to my toes this time. So tuck the toes, thumbs to your armpits, core engage, pushing up, lower all the way back down, back extension, arms reach overhead, pull the chest off the floor, put the hands back down, push up. Slowly lower down, arms up, pull, hands down. See how now I'm moving a little faster? Once you kind of get the rhythm, you can get a few more reps in, start to challenge yourself. But again, I want you to focus really on that core right here, keeping your body moving as a board, as a unit. And then right here, lifting that chest. Only thing that needs to stay on the ground is from the belly button down in that back extension. So belly button down, down, it stays down, but everything else lifts. Let's finish this last one. Timer's on, done. Whew. Last exercise done. We finished the intermediate workout. I'm definitely sweaty and my hair is probably a hot mess, but you know what? That's a sign of a good workout. Congrats for making it through. That was a tough one. So you've done the beginner, you've done the intermediate. Next is the advanced variation. So do this one a few times. Again, play around with the elevation, play around with the weights. Get comfortable with the movements. Doesn't mean they'll ever feel easy but to where you can do them safely and effectively before we move on to the final variation of this workout. And again, if you want more guidance through C-section workouts, be sure to check out my YouTube guides on my website. I have a C-section specific guide with 12 weeks of guided YouTube workouts, 72 workouts total, all led by me. I'm gonna keep you accountable on a schedule for every single day of a 12 week period to get you Build it back, building back up in your strength, your endurance, and just feeling good in your body postpartum. So be sure to check that out. I've linked it in the description, as well as everything else I'm using for the workout today. I'll see you back here next time for that advanced workout. Bye guys.